A very, 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 very good afternoon, everyone. Our apologies for the 10 minutes delay, which is inexcusable. I know our technical team was delivering flowers, and uh, one of them found another boyfriend. So it's the zone of the day, and that is what is going on. But welcome to the NSSF Financial Literacy Program. This is our two hours of when we go back to school. My name is Mboa Apollo, and I'm happy to be your headmaster. I usually tell them, I tell everyone here that I am the headmaster of this school because in this school we humble ourselves and go back to school and we put ourselves at the knees of the class teachers that will be here today, aka the panelists, to just learn about money. Money is something that we never learn in school, but it's something that we are educated to come and earn. So for this particular program and today, after have what we faced with our back office team delivering flowers, it is Valentine's Day. But let's assess your relationship with money. Again, our apologies and uh, it's inexcusable. It will not happen again. But uh, forgive, forgive. Thank you so much for tuning in. We'll kick off right away. And uh, my job is, is the easiest here is just to make the introduction. So allow me to introduce and then hand you over to our esteemed panelists who are going to take us through what it is that we need to talk about money and us. I always want to start with reminding you why we do this. Why as NSSF do we get to labor to do this? And it is threefold. One, we want to build a financially empowered membership and national citizenry. Everyone should be able to be empowered about the money matters. To talk about money, to have a relationship with money, a meaningful relationship. We want to reverse the current statistics of where people get their money, where people get their salaries, and they have a very short uh, shelf life. You get your salary and it doesn't spend in your, in, in your pockets more than a, a week. That needs to be reversed. And we need to have members and, and various population segments having options through their lifestyle, financial options. What are the options you have? When you talk about money, what are the options you have? So while we deliberate this, allow me to just introduce a few uh, and picking from one of our good professors. There are relationships of money that uh, can, be, uh, can, can be described differently. One is the avoidance relationship. A number of us have an avoidance relationship with money. Those people have negative association. They call money that they call wealth. Those people, they, 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 they find very huge names about money anything to talk about money they want they, they have a negative relationship negative negative attitude towards money what is your attitude towards money is it the avoidance or is it the worship relationship worship relationship they wash you they will do anything for the money the more money they get the more happier but the more happier they get the more money they want it is it is endless money is the circle of man, money is the center of everything what is your relationship? I'm just going through this, then I can hand over to our esteemed panelists. There is that repulsive and rival relationship. For you and money, you ha have clearly, uh, you, 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 have, you, you have decided that you will never move in the same direction. It comes to you, you go away. You go to it, it goes away. You, have, you are rivals, you are co-wives, you, you do not stay in the same place. You curse each other. You have unkind words for each other. Money calls you, uh, co calls you poor. You call it that is for those people who don't. There's much more in life than money. You have great stories on how to get it, but you actually never have any of it. What's your relationship? Today we're talking about money relationships. There are those whose relationship is money is a status. It's a status symbol. Money is a status symbol. Money defines them. Money makes them, they have a price for everything. When they walk into a building, they say, I was driving my 32 million car and uh, putting on my 200,000 200, shilling shoes. They have a price. Everything is, is, is priced. We, we went to Sheraton and had our 5,000 uh, shilling soda. There's a price. They, they price tag everything, and they are trying to keeping up. They, they try keeping up with the Jones, even if those Jones are broke. Money is a status symbol for them. There is another group where money 
their relationship with it is, is mastery and they are vigilant about it for money to them money is a tool they keep sending it they send it to do things and it comes back with more money frugality is key in their lives what's your relationship as we celebrate this valentines i want you to celebrate your loved ones in within your means they will appreciate it they will appreciate it i'll tell you if it is not but if it's not on budget ladies and gentlemen this valentines if something is not on budget then it wasn't that important don't give in to peer pressure if they are buying a car for your girlfriend and for you you do not have anything that your boyfriend is buying for you it is okay it wasn't important for them to budget the, for those ones they budgeted for the car so don't give in and then start asking for that same car don't devolve feelings that are out of your range there is an, there is something for everyone I, I, you need to do not introduce new things in your life you clearly know you are coming from a certain village where some of these things are foreign and all of a sudden you are getting into that so much english and saying i need those things they should be who who doesn't get me those things how how does it happen no get feelings within your range within your budget i am not here to advocate for the stingy people but don't deploy what you don't have don't deploy what you do not have this is valentines if you if you have words use them if you have time use it if you have the money deploy it but don't deploy money when all you have is time don't deploy what you do not have it is financial indiscipline not to know when when to eat money ladies and gentlemen i know the stingy men were coming up and saying yes keep telling them but now i'm also telling you it is financial indiscipline for you not to know when to eat your money but i emphasize it has to be your money your money because some of you are eating money but not your money it is in discipline you need to celebrate yourself you need to celebrate your dear using your money not other people's money so ladies and gentlemen today we have a panel of distinguished panelists and they're going to be discussing your relationship with money but before we get into that let's go to our poll question who are we the panel would like to know who you are what do you do who are you in it comes to this money situation so that they can they, they can they, they can get this clear as they as they deploy their presentations today they will understand this clearly so if the back office team is kind enough please that poll is saying who are you we need to know are you male are you female what's your age bracket are you under 20 20 to 30 30 to 40 40 to 50 or above 50 let's fill out this and let's have this in uh, the next three seconds uh this is good for our panelists they need to understand they need to understand uh yes calorin is asking me for for gender can we put binary i'm afraid not for now not we can't we can't we, ja we will recognize you male as female you might feel male when you are female but uh, that's a feeling for now let's just stick to these two i also feel american i was born in uh, in Uluweru, but i feel american do i confess him kindly kindly share with me those results share with me those results yes to the, our panelists today it is 51% males kudos to the ladies kudos to the ladies kudos 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 because the ladies are just catching up on this money conversation just to give a brief to my panelists the ladies we've always had a, a 30 70 split and we have been drumming up support and say ladies get onto this table where we discuss financial matters and yes indeed you are getting there the majority of our participants are between 30 to 40 uh the next majority is with 25 percent is 20 to 30 and uh 20 percent of between 40 to 50 and again we have a healthy number above 50 normally we have about four percent thank you so much for joining in ladies let's just have our second poll question and understand 
what is your just describe your relationship with money this is good for our panelists to articulate themselves describe your relationship with money and you have the choices a single choice money commands me and i obey we are playing hide and seek me and money play hide and seek we are on good terms i have sufficient of it i com so i command it we do not have a relationship at all i do not know so where are you who are you when it comes to the money items does it command you and you obey does it is it playing hide and seek you've been looking for it all this time are you on good terms do you have sufficient that you can send it and ask it to bring whatever it brings or you do not have a relationship at all we talk about money man and man and you in the same sentence are virtually impossible thank you so much let's see what the results show us and the results are for my panel yes 36 percent the majority 16 percent says i do not know they do not know then a good four percent are saying there is no relationship with money ladies and gentlemen i think that is it from our end from my side as i introduce allow me to take you th right direct to our panelists today and uh, it i am not fit to introduce them you will hold off on uh, one of our panelists he's finalizing something he'll be joining the panel shortly but for now without delaying you let me hand you over to uncle mo uncle mo mechanica from chireka Uncle Mo, just a few house rules. In this classroom, I am referred to as Sir Headmaster Sir. Sir Headmaster Sir. Repeat it again. Sir Headmaster Sir. Again, repeat. <coughs> Sir Headmaster ah, Sir. Thank you so much. <laughs> so, Uncle Mo, the people you are going to be discussing with are NSSF members and yes. the national citizens are at war. They are taken off time, two hours of their life this, this afternoon to just come and discuss money. They have come to school. They understand the value of education there so they have come to school they even paid school fees to come and discuss money so kindly introduce your panel thank you sir headmaster sir <laughs> thank you very much i am glad to know you sir uh sir headmaster sir mr boa apollo everybody online we are excited to have you here to have another installment of this uh financial literacy program at nssf we uh we're going to talk very interesting things but before i even start it is uh, uh, now approximately 3.25, so if the flowers have not yet come, I'm just trying to say that the odds now uh, are really going really, really against you. But we're going to do our best to keep with you, so keep strong. Probably somewhere in the evening, something might come through for you. Now, today, ladies and gentlemen, I am Uncle Mo, I'm Makanika from Chireka. I'm very happy to be here, also known as Moses Chiboneka. But I'm not the important person today. The important person today are the people that I have on the panel. A very exciting <laughs> panel. And I want to start with, I want to start with the funder. Sorry, it took a bit of time to start. Thought we were starting to get worried that our stage has collapsed. No, we're in a building. The building is up and standing. And I want to bring to you uh, a lady that I've been interfacing with on my TV, media personality, because of the things she does. Uh, that are around transformation of people, training people. She's an expert uh, with developing people's lifestyles. I am glad to know her like that, and today I meet her, a one Hilda Sabiti Bahati. I am happy to have you here today. Hope you don't want me to call you sir. <laughs> uh, no, me, I am, <laughs> I, am a a <laughs> I am a student. I'm a student of the <laughs> I am part of the teaching staff. Yeah, it's an honor to meet you. I'm well. very happy to see you. No, before we even start, I, I, I want you to first tell the people that are online who Hilda is. Okay. Now Hilda has uh, wears many hats, but I'm a wife, a mother, yes. and um, I would say an entrepreneur, a people yeah. developer. That's it. Beautiful. The long and short of it. Uh, <laughs> I, 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 I also understand you. You you are you you are an author. Yes, I, had, I am. You know, I had a chance to read a book before I knew you. I mm -hmm. read the book that was written by you. So I see you on TV, mm -hmm. and I'm like, no, that name. So I checked the book, mm -hmm. and I found it's uh, it's called um, uh, deliberately. No, in, um. in, in, 
uh, something deliberately selfish mm. something yes mm. that one mm. it's a book it's a book about self love <laughs> so today all of you out there you might want to read a lot of this book because you're going to become someone who needs to love yourself in case no one has loved you today <laughs> but anyway <laughs> talking about <laughs> i i really really enjoy that have you written anything apart from that uh, yes i have uh, tears on my pillow Uh, it's, it's Why are all your books <laughs> around uh, the 14th of February? I uh, know, no no no, not around the 14th of February, but I think we need to get healthy. Just like we need to be healthy with the money. Yes. I think we need to be healthy in our self-worth, you know, and and loving ourselves. And then uh the latest res- release is the coaching book. I'm a coach trainer as well, so I have a mentorship academy, so um, I train coaches and people help us. So those those are three installments. Yes. Of the three, which one is your favorite? I'll go back to deliberately selfish because it was an era where I was I was also developing into this person. I was a people pleaser, the cast of lovely, you know, wanting everyone to be fine and yeah. just putting my needs at the back burner and hoping that everything is going to work out until I realized that oh, in order for me to have a better relationship, to have a better relationship even with money, yes. I need to be able to love myself enough and then bring myself into these concepts as a whole person. Nice. What 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 inspires you? to i mean what's your inspiration as an author my inspiration comes from uh, my pain and the background that i come from uh from total poverty i don't fear talking about this i know it's the story for so but, many uh, but of us and and among the <laughs> among the prerequisites to uh-huh. come to this panel you mm. must have first suffered some <laughs> amount so they chose the right person <laughs> right <laughs> yeah so my pain pushes me that yes. i have pushed myself to where i am definitely with the help of god personal growth and being intentional and mindful yes. and i see so many people that are stuck some where and i believe i should be able to extend a hand and that's why most of my programs are called hold my hand i hold people's hands and not leave anyone behind because yeah. i know that series and the process that i've gone through people can go through and they can make it in life and importantly at the back of all this there is some money being made definitely definitely you have you you, you have to though yeah. most of my events are actually free of charge because i need everyone to be able to come out and be intentional it's it, it is it is a system of making money really first give samples <laughs> yeah first give samples uh, 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 and and to dive right into it i want the to money has to be there it yeah. has to be passion purpose and paycheck come again passion purpose and paycheck the three p's mm-hmm. the trinity mm-hmm. now i know those <laughs> ones uh, so so and uh th- this gets me to ask you because uh, the inv- um the conversation today is about people's relationship with yes, money yes. and I, i i don't want to even get into the audience's relationship before i discuss yours mm. what my relationship now i've been through all the stages i've been <laughs> I've been through all the stages where it's not even hide and seek but you are the seeker and <laughs> what you are seeking does not want to be found. Right. I've been through the stage and I've been through the stage of you know endless bargaining of am I ever going to make it you know is it just for some people is it for lucky ones or something like that and then I get to a place where I have enough of it and then I have sufficient and now it's working for me. So yeah. I've been through all the tears I know the pain that is attached to each one of them and I think after you've gone through the process there is a way it um purifies you to be able to have a healthy relationship yes. whether you want it or not because this is a choice yeah. there are those who will get enough of it and then they will just choose to do anything with it but there is you going through the painful process and you look back and say I never want to go back to that uh, ditch right. so that is motivation enough for me to yeah. actually be a master because I do not want to be a a a, a slave to money yeah. I want to use it I want to enjoy it and i want to be able to help others with it i hear you uh, and uh, in this time when you i mean said you're playing you're playing hide and seek with money mm-hmm. you is it is it a thing of needs or there is also a thing inside you that tells you you want to be to money to define you you know we have given money a certain image yeah. that we have given it the power to define us mm-hmm. did you feel less of a person that you didn't have or when you don't have the problem is you can't eat now the thing is uh, at that moment i did not have that much exposure to think that way i grew up in a family where we were so poor but very content 
Yeah. I don't know whether you understand what that means. I, totally. Like you don't admire what others are. Have, you, th- when you're like that, you don't even know that you're poor. You don't. Or know. even when you know you're poor, you don't know how poor you exactly. are. Exactly. But do you know? Do you know? <laughs> do you know? Do you know? There's a, people need to understand. Do you know there's that thing? You're poor, but you even don't know. You don't like, know. Like to what extent? And then like you're going to buy a chapati. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah, you have your one thousand. Then you find it is one thousand two hundred. Mm-hmm. Like you thought you were poor, mm-hmm. but even with poor people, they have told you you can't qualify. I know you can't get it. Yeah. And um, and there's so many people who are living like that. And sometimes I look at some people and I'm like, okay, uh, right now I've learned to detach myself from people's emotions yeah. because half the time I am thinking the way I'm thinking right now and yet they're thinking at a different level. Uh, yeah. Because I used to look at people and I'm like, oh, he's suffering. And yet I discover they don't know they are suffering and that right. baffles me. So when while I was in that moment, I remember at uh, one very uh, crucial thing that really, really happened that got me out of the ditch. Mm-hmm. And I made a covenant never to be broken 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 ever in my life it was a time I was at Chambogo I went back to school after you know things had failed and now I was uh, much older and everyone uh, else was younger yeah, like, let me so, let me appeal I know it was really an appeal. So I go back in there. I know what I want, but I, what I want is not marketable, but I feel that is a passion I want. So I go and this particular day I had 200 shillings. And I had to go back to Chireka because uh, I was in Banda, Chambogo, yeah. and I had to walk back to Ch- Chireka because that's where I was staying. I went through Banda Market. Yes. Because yeah, I knew if I went home, I would have nothing to eat. So I went ba- through Banda, and my mind told me, if I bought carrots, I think I'll have enough carrots in 200 shillings so that I can at least have lunch. And I'm, I'm the firstborn. My mother had called me and told me that my sister, my siblings had not eaten. And I'd chosen to take my back to, myself back to school because I knew if I don't ba- go back to school, my <coughs> siblings didn't have a future. Yeah. So I go and I look at this woman and give her the 200 and tell her, give me carrots. She looks at me a young beautiful girl and I think she just thought about her children I don't know what came to her mind but she gave me a, 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 you know, a katasa you know a, a pail of, yes. of, of carrots so I go with a pail of carrots back to my room one single room with one bed it was three by six and so I sit on that pole actually I sat down on, on, on cement mm-hmm. and I remember tears gushing out of my eyes and I looked at the bleak future that if I did not make a turn around I was dying and I was burying my siblings and my family and so I made a prayer to God and I said I am going to foot to town tomorrow morning to look for a job I don't know where I will find it, but I'm going to foot to town to make sure that I look at, for a job. But I made sure because that time it was a rough patch for me. You know, when you're heartbroken and then you're broke. <laughs> Do you know how that feels? So, broke, I, I was, bro so I promised myself that never in this lifetime will I ever be broken and broke. Ever again. I promised myself. And let me tell you, Uncle Mo, yeah. that was the last time. It, when you when you when you talk about being broke, I had a, a, a chat with uh, uh, Said Master, Sir, the headmaster of this mm-hmm. place, mm-hmm. Mr. Mbawa himself, <laughs> and he told me mm. if the things you are fearing, like it, take twenty four hours of your day, mm-hmm. twenty three hours, mm-hmm. fear poverty, mm-hmm. the I last know. hour, <laughs> fear it more. <laughs> <laughs> he told me being poor is a bad thing oh, that you might be stuck in the ICU mm-hmm. and they need money and they come to your relatives and they're like, uh, how wha, wha, this is going to cost so much? And Are you ready? And, and, and he said, and the, your relatives will say, Tumuleka again. Let me tell you, they will say that. You know, they're human beings. They feel the pain. But what can you do if you can't do anything about you, it? You're, you're costing them when you're sick and when you're alive. Exactly. So they will let you go. But you see, this intimate uh, connection you have with having mm-hmm. and not having is something you do in, in, in your life, in your career as a, as a coach. Mm. Do you talk about these things with your children? Now, my children are younger. You know, I did everything late. I <laughs> went to school late. I got married late. I gave birth late. So Even the money came... came <laughs> did you say no, no, the money didn't. Was around. Uh, the, uh, <laughs> not really around, but that whole journey took yeah. really uh, a time. I was not privileged to have it way early in life. Mm-hmm. So by the time I get the exposure, by the time I put in the work, I put in the effort, I've availed myself, I push it, I push it through. Yes, I would say... I arrived at the scene later than most people would like to think or would say is convenient, yeah. but I'm glad I arrived when I arrived. Yes, I hear you. Yes. Well, so, because you see, I, I, I would think you have that situation whereby you go, you go 
you go out and t say all these big things to co congregation uh, to I don't know, you know, I, I was looking yeah, at Yeah, congregations. Yeah, they are <laughs> congregations. Right. And, yeah. and and you see all these things you tell you tell to people, mm. you come back to your own household mm. and you're like, I should have started here. <laughs> Ah, oh, yeah, but but uh, you see, when you you've gone through the life that I've gone through, and I think not everyone does that, but yes. because I don't want to go back there, yes. I wouldn't want to see my children there. I hear. So I try so much that even when they are young, there are no solid words I can tell them that you know big words and huge words. Yes. But I know I've done this with my brothers to the extent I will call them when the year is beginning, and I will tell them I have two brothers. I will tell them Mozale be muna sobola. You cannot give anyone a burden. So, so let me ask you I this question. <laughs> quick, quick. I'm going to interject right there. What brings brokenness here? Where, where do we draw the line? No, the, the thing is, what, I mean, you, 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 yes, you can, you can give birth. If you give birth to more than what you can manage, that is also, you know, another gateway that you have opened. Mm -hmm. But again, there is this poverty mentality that people have especially in Africa yes. and not just Uganda but in Africa where someone does not go to school and they have a sister somewhere who yes. has their children going to school yes. and they'll be like ah it's only her children going to school and mine are going to school well I mean I wasn't in your bed I, I wasn't in your home while you were doing your family planning or whether you didn't plan so why do you want me to carry your burden yes I can help, yes. I can extend a hand, but let it not be a must that you look at me pulling my piece of chicken and yes, you're footing to wherever, wherever you have to foot, and then you're putting your head upside down and you're saying, ah, they are not helping us. I actually had someone talk about that, that if someone comes and uh, they have a cancer situation, I want to contribute. But if it is something they have brought onto themselves, like their own children... I don't want to hear you about see? <laughs> yeah but I, I mean there are certain things i wouldn't want to say here live because i mean maybe this is age appropriate content so <laughs> no, before no. ucc comes for us i, I, I no but I, I totally understand you because behind all this there is a human there being choices yes uh now ladies and gentlemen before we even continue with that conversation um we are you know we've been talking to a life coach so we can talk forever but i would like to introduce to you another gentleman Ladies and gentlemen, a teacher of our times. I think, if I'm not mistaken, was ordained around around 2014. If I'm right, exactly. he was ordained around 2014, and he has been going uh, to quote unquote. He says, uh, "I teach." Eh? I think he, he, I, I heard you say that I am a priest and I'm supposed to say these things. Every time I, I there is no Ugandan that wakes up and uh, they don't have a video of you in their phone. At least in the week, they have to watch you saying something somewhere. I am very glad to have you, Reverend Father Deo Gracias Chiri. Thank you. How are you, Sebo? I'm fine. How are our people? Where are you coming from? People are fine. They are very good. Hope now, they're for, watching for, me. They, are they on? <laughs> Let us be sure. Are they watching? <laughs> I hope so, because I did. Yeah, okay. I <laughs> Now, now, uh, and uh, sorry, I just uh, threw you right into the fire. I was, I was talking to uh, Hilda here, and I was asking her how, how relationship with money before I talk yeah. about anyone's relationships. And I want to ask you, what is your relationship with money? My relationship with money. First of all, um, I want to say hello to everyone watching. Us. No, be, wait, wait, wait. Sorry, I'm going to cut you short there. I, there are some people who don't know you. Oh, okay. Who is, who is Reverend <laughs> Father Chief? Sunday to Simbu. Okay, relationship with money. Um, all along, I've been telling people that uh, I, uh, I love money because of four reasons. One, money helps me to control or manage my life. Secondary, yes. secondary money helps me to, to live a life of option. Yes. I can eat what I want. I can take my kids to, to any school I want. Yeah. I can drive the car of my choice. Yeah. So money helps you to have an option. Then three, I like money uh, because money helps me to live a life of social contribution. I can, go, I can give back. There's right. no any billionaire. I've read about does not have a give back tunnel. You know, you give back. Yeah. And lastly, uh, I, I tell people that I like money because money helps me to have peace. If I have 20,000 and I'm heading to Masaka, and that's the only money I have in my pocket, yeah. I can't even sleep. <laughs> but when I have money here and everywhere, yeah. and on an ATM, I can be able to sleep. So my relationship with money, um, uh, there is, there is a, one of the motivational speakers I listen to is uh, Les Brown. He said, we don't get in life what we want. Yes. We get who we are. So uh, 
when I think of beginning a month and uh, expecting no pay, yes. expecting no income, demanding nobody, that puts my life in a trigger. So my relationship with the money is, uh, you know, I try to handle, to manage what I have <coughs> well so that it can guarantee me tomorrow in the case I don't have. I, I totally understand that. And and mm. so so money is, I mean, what you've painted is money is a lifestyle. You know, we, we live a life where you walk out of your house like this, 20,000 has been spent. You even don't know how. Yep. Just because you've walked out. That's how money is with our lives. But you see, <clears throat> from what mm. you've explained and from what Hilda talked about earlier, we have given money a certain seat, a certain driving seat yep. in, in, in society. Uh, I mean, today's Valentine's Day and so many re relationships are going to be strengthened because there was money. Yeah. And some will end because there was the lack of <laughs> today. So I want to understand. But was that a relationship in the first place? It's where I want to go. That I want to understand that mm. where do we draw the line between toxic relationship with money and actually being on our journey to acquiring wealth for us and for the, our children we're having in this, li in this life? Hilda. The toxic relationship, uh, that is, you mean the toxic relationship be between you and money yes. as, a, as, as a person without going into uh, other relationships. Yeah. Now, uh, when you talk about toxic relationships, definitely uh, this is where you've not really understood what money is supposed to be in your life yeah. or you are operating at an emotional level about money. And you're not being uh, objective or you're not uh, being clear about what it is that you want at the, end, at, the, at the end of it. So if this relationship is going to be toxic, that means you are doing something wrong that does not guarantee that that money is either going to come to you. Yes. And even when it comes to you, that means it can't stay with you. And even when it stays with you, that means it can't grow. Right. Because you have to earn it, you have to be able to maintain or grow it, yes. and you have to be, the cycle has to, you know, to be repeated. So, where the toxicity comes is we as individuals are the ones that are toxic. An object as money cannot be toxic. On its own. Yeah, on its own, it can't. But we are the ones that think for it, we are the ones that send it, we are the ones that use it, we are the ones, so the moment we use it in the wrong way, yes. that's how it uh, it becomes toxic. It's like, uh, the Bible says, says that the love of money is the is the beginning i think the luganda the luganda one has a, a better way of saying it not really like um you getting the money is the root cause of but the love of it that you are willing to do anything dubious in order it to get it yeah. so you see how the toxicity comes <coughs> you've been playing cat and mouse with money hide and seek with yes. money and all of a sudden you're thinking you know what then i should um and i think the same bible talks about um okwe gumba or, yes. or you know to one Wanting, coveting, I want exactly that car. And then you're like, you know what? I better kill him and get that car. So it's us, the people that bring our toxic, uh, toxic tendencies and narcissistic tendencies yeah. towards money. But the money on its own, that is a very beautiful tool that God put into our hands to be able to accomplish his work and touch his people and be able to change so much in the world. And that makes so much sense because if I may quote the good reverend father i think around 2021 you said a moneyless relationship is risky actually not <laughs> not only that recently uh they told me the uh, one of the rotary clubs called me to to talk something about a moneyless relationship is a, is a risky yeah. but i said not only a moneyless relation not only is a moneyless relationship risky but even even moneyless life <laughs> is even risky mm, so when sure. when when you do not have any money so um you um you were you were talking about where do where do we draw the line, the line uh, between the the the, the toxicity relationships then even even acquiring wealth and our financial freedom and so on uh, you see the problem we have here in Uganda and maybe in, in many parts of in Africa, you see, we grow up from very, very humble homes and we are not so much acclimatized with this thing called this money. Yes. Many people have gotten money after, th after, th after, th after school. Yes. The, 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 they could be given money, little money for pocket money. So get, getting some huge sums of money comes after 30. And when it comes in a lot, you don't know what to do with it. 
you know yeah. so so that's where the entire problem is that people work hard they get the money but they don't know how to manage it i know some people have, who have flown out of the country to Ghana, but their valentine's day out somewhere else and they have gone husband wife and children they have gone out so these are people who have a plan so when you have a plan with your money i think all other issues are easier to manage but the problem is people work so hard they get the money but when the money comes yeah. they don't know what to do with it they don't know how to manage it that's the biggest problem i hear you uh, if i may just go back to the earlier uh thing i asked i really want to hear your sentiments about how the a relationship risk. becomes <laughs> <laughs> risky that statement is always ringing in my mind. A, a moneyless relationship is risky. It's risky. <laughs> yes. Uh, because um, when there is no money in a home, in a marriage, in a family, there are a lot of tensions. A lot of tensions. That's true. Then even the children become unruly. You know, uh, I've been talking about uh, if someone is a man in a family and like an elder brother, because you can be in a home when the woman is the one taking care of everything. That means you are reduced from being a husband to like someone like an, an elder brother. <laughs> you know? So, so, when there, so you cannot be at peace. You can't be at peace. So, so uh, the, 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 the riskiness in not having money in a home are the tensions and mm. so on. The other time I was reading some statistics about marriage and they said there are so many people who entered marriage when they are okay. But now they are, mo many of them have developed cardiovascular sicknesses, high blood pressure. Yes. Most of these sicknesses are coming because of lack of money. Mm. So, 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 so this is the problem. This is a, this is a challenge. Me, me, I'm a priest. I'm assured of breakfast, lunch, supper. I don't pay rent. But again, if my pockets are empty, I don't feel at peace with myself. Mm. So, so money, money is something. Uh, I read about the most successful people in the 21st century. Uh, and I and I I drew fifty lessons from them. Actually, even I've I've written a book that I'm yet to publish uh, called A Desirable Road to Seven Driven Life. And one of the one one of the things I I read mostly about is money. Money. So money is a tool that we need to drive life, to drive marriage, to drive our ambitions and mm. our future. That's so, so 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 the, the the topic you and your money actually is a health check for each one watching. Yeah. When people need to be talked to to know how far they can go and 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 what to do exactly that tomorrow is safe because today is guaranteed this year is guaranteed your job is here by tomorrow or next year there's no guarantee yeah and and i want to i want to bring in the uh, the idea of insensitivity yeah. you know um you will have singers you know and uh, relationship um uh, experts and so tell people you know hang in there you know marriage there's always you know problems and what but when it comes to money uh the heart fails at, after some time yeah. you can hang in there you can be patient okay mm. and at some point, you will not be patient anymore. You will lose it. Right. Okay, and that is where the issue of sensitivity should come in, especially when it comes to for the, to to the man. Mm. If God gave you the mandate to be the provider in a home, it doesn't mean that the woman is not going to chip in. They are yeah. going to chip in. But if the woman becomes the head of the home, or if the woman becomes the man, mm. the war unto you. That family is headed for destruction because this woman will assume this role. He will be okay. She will be okay the first year, the second year, and the third year. Most of these men are actually very insensitive. He will say, "You know, let me stay home," and then the woman will pay school fees. The woman will take the children to to uh, I mean, clothe the children, give them medical care, give them what to eat, and even the man will say, "Give me air time." And guess <laughs> what? Such a man that is insensitive, when given air time, they will call to actually vibe other women. They will never have anything sensible in their heads to actually contribute to the family. Because by the time you ask for airtime, you ask to be bought Andes. And then after that, you will ask that, you know, I have dates. And uh, then you will start being manipul manipulative. You come home with silent treatment because the woman has not paid your dates. But the woman is actually housing you and housing your children and doing, doing everything. So you have to be very, very sensitive. I, I'm not saying it does not apply to the women. Yeah. It applies because when we... When a woman decides to be insensitive, my goodness, 
that mm. tilts to the extreme. Right. But again, for a man, I feel so sorry for every man that is totally insensitive and oblivious about what the future holds, and yet they are the head of the family and they want to be the heads. Uh, for me, when I'm wedding couples, yes. I always tell them to have a shared vision for money. When you're beginning the year, you must know where you are <laughs> heading to. You see, a word father, a husband, you know, a word father yes. is a from, from, from a Hebrew word that means source and sustainer of a home. So, and even the Bible, when St. Paul is writing the, to, to, to the Corinthians, he, he, he calls a man a small lord, lord, mokama, mm. So, so the, the man is given a lot on his shoulders. The problem we have now with women today, most of the women that we have, yes. uh, they grew up in homes where the men yes. were the sole providers of the basic needs of the family. Yes. Most of the women that we have, that's why they complain. When, when a man leaves the entire responsibilities to them, in in some other places it works, you know. Can be fifty fifty. In if, the Western country. Yeah, yeah, if you're both working. But women here, they are not yet used to that because all of them grew up seeing their fathers bring everything at home. Even me in my home, in my family. Mm -hmm. Our dad was the sole provider. But today I always encourage husband and wife to sit together. Yeah. I, I, I always bring in this the issue of the our, uh, the our money notion our money notion as that you must have, minimally you must have three accounts in a home you must have a personal account as a husband a personal account as as as, as a wife then you must have also a family account so so the entire issue of money if both of you are working yes. you must sit together and see how you are moving forward. If both of you are working, you must you you, you must divide. Yes. You must divide. Say, as a uh, uh, you as a uh, uh, as a wife, you you will handle this and that. Me, I should I will handle this and that. Then you can be able to move on. But you know, many times these men have been so much. They, they are they are now in many abusive relationships. Some of these men are suffering inside there, yeah. especially if you were once working, and now you are not working. Because yeah, everyone knows that you are the daddy. The word daddy is a sweet word for provider. <laughs> One time I was somewhere and I said, ta 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 Because for us to grow up knowing that if you have an open, your dad. You, t you talk to your mom, yes. then your mom says, I'm going, to talk, I'm going to talk to your dad. But now the generation has changed. Yes. We need the husband and the wife to get involved in the daily running of your home. You must have a shared vision. You must have financial goals you set when you are beginning the year. And you analyze. Because in the end, it's all about you. Yeah. But one of the things I've met that's very difficult is begging. You see, begging belittles you. Mm. Begging belittles you. But to family. Munzikiza nyugeye kuruganda. Mbobango olimu family. Tukeze ngo musajja. Nengo olingo mutabani wa uomu kuru. Ngalawo ina kusababu sabinga abana. Papa saba mpeji tabo. You can never have any peace. Yeah. So, in the end, begging, people can contribute for you the first time when you are going for an operation in Nairobi. Even the second time. The third time, it is impossible. For me, I demolished the church in Mpeji. People came and promised us money. Till now, some are honorables. They have not even paid the money. So I've been telling people, if they refuse to give the money to a priest, what about you, a person? <laughs> so I encourage everyone to work for themselves, work for your families. If you have a wife, if you have a husband, whether it is you who married the wife or the wife marrying you, as long as you are together inside there. Yes. For us, we say it's a union. Mm. You must, it is incumbent on you to sit down, see how much is coming in, and how you are moving forward with your money issues. You know, there's, a, there's a, an artist, a popular artist in this country who sang a song, <laughs> Now, <laughs> now <laughs> now <laughs> now <laughs> even in a meeting, you appear like a spy. <laughs> I know. <laughs> you're 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 hey. you're Actually, <laughs> even in a family. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but I'm going to say, I'm going to say, I'm going to say, I'm going to say, i but and Kokuno Nereza, what happened to us? They didn't know. The other one is the one who took off all your blessings. So, so this money, money, money is a very important. Unfortunately, you know, people don't know. You see, money does not have legs. 
So mm. money comes, you see, I compare normally money with a woman. They have never married. <laughs> but but I compare money to to women. Yes. Before you can pick someone who's girl from their from their home, mm. you must prove to the father and the mother that will manage to look after her. Yes. So so you go with the introduction. She introduces you to the husband. Correct. When money tests, that's why I tell people that when money, uh, 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 I met a man who told me, Father, I don't sleep because I fear to go back to where I was 20 years ago. We were too poor. So, Saint was standing in the Kujajori. No, it was Friday. It was Saturday, not at Dakar. It was Sunday, not at Dakar. Hiyo na wiki no bina mbinyumo no nyue miyenge no kola chi. So money now, be, if, if you cannot manage the money that is coming in now, money manages you. Neta andi koku kweye wamu quantities zona jisobola. So, kasobe lango paruka. That's why there are so many people who have worked so hard for years and they don't have, they are not worthy. Zee salako. Te wali musajja mugagga munafu, mpozi nga mubi. Eh, bano bana bana sente zimala kusima. Actually, sente bakuwa na angwa ne ngoiita mubi 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 kuruwa bio. Sente wazi kulaba ntuzi sabola. Bozi daga direction. When you come, you go here. Money comes, but if money comes to you at first, and it discovers that you can't manage it, however much you work hard, however much you don't sleep, however much you go to America. To UK for greener pastures. Mm. Greener pastures will never become greener. You will never have that money. <laughs> I hear you. Now, uh, before we continue, I want to tell the people that are online that it is approximately 4 p.m. Just want to tell you that if the flowers have not yet come, Why the odds the odds are really going against you. Now, going back to what uh, my father said about shared vision. Uh, Hilda, we, we have a thing uh, about... Um, you know, those, uh, what do they call them? Those conservative men mm -hmm. who don't believe in showing their things. Eh? The man brings home, he just shows mm -hmm. up someday, he has money. Yeah. Then he goes away, then he comes back, you guys have a house. Mm. You know, and the woman just says, Kasta, he provides. Mm. Mm. Uh, that kind of thing. What do you have to say about people who live like that? The thing is, we are brought up differently from different places. And there are some women that lack confidence. They have no self-worth. And they are also not hard workers themselves. Yeah. And they are on the receiving end. Yeah. So such a woman will wait for anything that is going to fall into her laps. And then she will say, cast other man brings. brings. She will not even question. But again, there are some of us that are really hard working. That say that, you know what, if you can get this... Plus what I have, we can do something bigger. Mm. So bring yours to the table. I bring mine to the table. And I like that. I, I re usually use what the Reverend sa father said, mm. where you have your own money and he has his own money and you have a joint. Because then maybe I need to blow off, you know, some money. Sometimes you need to be kind to yourself right. and treat yourself. So you need to have your own money. So when it comes to uh, such scenarios, I think it comes from the background, how we were brought up, yes. and then our relationship with money. Because in the end, uh, then we don't have, because we talked about shared vision. Then yes, there is then no you, they, 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 there is no shared vision. That means there is only a dictator in a house who is a tyrant, who is thinking things must go the way I want. So if he wants a sitting room that is as small as a toilet, he will construct a small room, a, a small room and that that's what you have to, to get into. And I think these come even from the conception of the relationship. Yeah. There are some people that, by the way, and this does not mean that this woman didn't go to school. It's possible she's a PhD, PhD holder, but she's a yes, yes person. Everything she was told, the man is the alpha and the omega, and you never say anything to a man, and you just see things happening. Go there, produce your children, and run your home. Yeah. And some people have been given such, and they, they, they have gone with it, they are content. But again, there are certain women in this generation that are not content with that they're like you know what let's plan together let's hold hands let's pray together let's believe let's work harder let's advance together and let's have a shared vision so you must know the kind of woman uh, there are some instances where a marriage has broken mm -hmm. and it's because the man is a traditional man so he expected to have a traditional woman that yes. says yes to everything and now he has this woman that is exposed has a temperament that is maybe sanguine like and quite outgoing and then she understands the value of money and she has a good relationship with money and so if you expect her to be yes maybe because she wants marriage 
she will say yes the first year and the second year. And then all of a sudden she will turn, she will flip. And then you'll be like, but you were a different person when I got married <laughs> to you and now you're a different person. Why? Because she wanted to get married because yeah. people have been told that marriage is the epitome of everything. And marriage is beautiful. God created it beautiful, but it has to have a good agenda and you yes. have to get into it the right way. Not because you are changing colors to be accepted and then when you get in there, change colors. So different people get in for different reasons and then they say yes for different reasons and then uh, there's a woman who is uh, traditional and has a, a man that is quite liberal so while the man is pulling her to the table to talk about the money yes. the woman is is say, saying ah, right. you, because that's what she has been told she's mm. traditional the man is liberal so yeah. the man and I've gotten so many of them into my my sessions and the man says oh my Right. And the the woman is saying, but Nkolabio Yagala Chichichirala Chamba Nkola. And you know, the man is like, No, as in Chamuka Muko, get right. excited, let's work together, let's share these things, let's move together. Yes. But the woman knows a totally different lifestyle. So those are soka, aba to kuzab, ye tukuli demo, our temperaments, there's a lot of contributing factors and then the culture and what we've been told surrounding marriage. You know people have been preached to yeah. different things. You know in order to sustain a marriage you must become stupid. In order to sustain a marriage as a woman you must not have enough money. You know, mm. if you have more money than I have no people that have not bought cars because tewali agenda bakwana. <laughs> yes, if I have a car and I drive a car to a date and the man will, will hate me. And so that means you have wrong beliefs about money. And believe me, that money is going to disappear. It's, it's going to go. Why? Because you want to be less of yourself so right. that you can make someone hi higher. Right, and that right. is how we create dictators. Because then you have to lessen yourself in order to make them the super people. So I think it goes back to understanding our worth, our self-worth, yes. and then to understand that there is a table and we must both bring value to this table yeah. and have, you know, a shared experience, just like he says, shared money values and shared experiences yeah. so that we can be able to hold hands in hands and disappear into the sunset, you know, and be called a power couple or, you know, <laughs> look right. nice. But until that, then I don't think that can happen. Mm, for me, I want to say something about that. Yeah. Uh, like I said, the entire problem is just gener the generation. Mm. Uh, for us, uh, okay, my dad is, was a medical doctor. He could come back on Friday, then he could bring everything, then we could do the shopping on Friday, Friday evening, we could go to the shops around, then buy everything, so we could wait for him. Then when we were going back to school, we could write, we could write down everything, everything, everything. Then they could kind of pack boxes. Uh, we could, they could pack, pack boxes for each one. Yes. Is the one who could come for our VD, you know? So um, this issue, uh, uh, this issue of, 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 you see, I've been telling people that secrecy is an enemy to intimacy. In you know, secrecy is an enemy to intimacy. Uh, you, you know, this is uh, Bot Cruz. You know about Bot Cruz? <laughs> yes. <laughs> People died, and many women didn't know what's happening with the finances of those yeah. people. Yeah. Uh, not only that, but many people die through accidents here. Yeah. So one of the one that time I was reading about the major killers of marriages globally, statistically, and the first one was lack of communication. Lack of communication was the major killer. Then Nekaza Murugano Kukuta. <laughs> These days, women, women, they have, they have, they have side businesses, side, side investments. Mm. You see, a woman sleeping, then all of a sudden, I want this, you, they wake up like this. Mm -hmm. Say, so, babe, what's the problem? Ah, nothing. Kumbe, no cement at the side. <laughs> <laughs> no cement at the side. So each each one, buli muntu ya bali mo kuku tabu kuku kuku tabu kuku. So <laughs> now, for me, I've been encouraging young people. Don't marry. Uh, you see, now these days we have changed the definition of marriage material. Marriage material is not a figure, because what, what even if you get you get you get uh, you get a man having muscles everywhere, even in the head, are you going to eat muscles in a local down? All g getting a very very brown lead that even if power goes off, you can see her. What is the brightness going to help you? I've been encouraging people to marry brains, marry brains. Marry or get married to someone who adds value to you. So, how can you be a wife inside the house and you don't know the job that your husband does? 
Right. Of course, many families don't know how much my husband gets. And when you ask him, that's the beginning of a fight. <laughs> they don't want to understand. But I want to encourage each one watching us, all our audience, you must know that you can die anytime. Yes. You see that thing of the, the, the issue of you, you and your money, it begins from the individual, it goes to businesses, it goes to institutions, it goes to marriage as well. You and your money. Uh, uh, actually, if you have grown ups in your home, there must not be any secrets. They must know. If you have HIV as, 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 as their dad, let them know. If you have high blood pressure, let them know. If you have debts in any bank, they must know. So th 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 there must be that some, some, some transparency regarding money. In the case of anything, people die in accidents, people die in water. So if, even, as, even as women, if it's, you, see, you see there are some women who have not been very supportive. Mm. Mm. We must be sharp enough, and you as a couple, obango ori no muntu gobera na ye chiba kaka tako to see how you're proceeding. Bina bina biyoko 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 even when you have a company. It's recently I was in the UK three months ago, and I I went in a funeral home that was in existence since 1886. But here, you check the businesses. People have died with their businesses. They, they, they died this year. Within three years, the business is no more. The company is no more. So we do not have yet companies and businesses that can outlive their status because of secrets. People about to work with maybe into the You business. We're running. Then when you die, everything dies. So Bobo says they walk was so moon to no better than a ye. Oh, man, you waited away. Oh, man, you put it in motion What else are you hiding when you die today? There are so many people who are rich now, they are wealthy, and when they die today, some of their children are going to live in misery. Too bad the moon, too bad the no Jabazika, a fool, no sang about professor, no sang about Dukita, Abasaja Valia Bagaga, Nanga will keep it up and about you, Bagana Kufam Wavu. Bulimutu yenango lina sento kwa mkisa mkama kukua de ne mkazi wo talk to her and see how you can multiply that man that even tomorrow when you die if the money can outlive you for me those people who die with their with, with, who die with their wealth I call them generational failures all men and women who are too stingy who are very selfish that even you cannot tell your wife how much you are earning how much and uh, your family it begins in panting. <laughs> Thank you very much. Now, uh, the people who are just joining us online and everyone who's there, we are here having a conversation about your relationship with money. Yes. So many of you, money is defining you. Uh, money, I mean, every time they give you a job, you're like, a deposit, deposit, for you, money is all over your conversation. So that's what we're having today. If you have a question, please leave it in the log. We shall get back to you and talk more about all those things. Now, from what you have been explaining, I've gotten to understand that our relationship with money seems to evolve from age to status to relationships you have because your relationship with money when you're married is different when you're single. It's what I'm, it's yeah. the, it's what I'm getting yeah. to feel now. Mm. So I want, I, want, I want people to understand that so they don't be on pressure of why, why should I have this mindset when I'm not in this situation. You know, to, make, to validate the conversation. Is really our relationship with money about a number of array of things? Definitely there are different concepts where money is applied. <coughs> okay? So in the concept, just like you said, when you're single, and I think I usually tell this to the ladies. Uh, when the ladies look at a man and they're like, oh, man, I want a man who, wants a, who has a Benz, who has built in Kololo, who has done what? Half the time, when the, money makes, when the man makes his money, half the, he's not thinking about those things. Yeah. Actually, most of the men desire a woman who will come into their lives and organize them in order to achieve some of those yeah, things. Yeah. But remember, these are not so many women. So while he has this, he will buy a car, you know, something like Zara, to get him from one place to another he'll maybe keep his money somewhere they will tell him of an investment and he will not like it will just be he aimless 
he's not thinking about because until you have children you can never know the importance of having insurance you <laughs> right. can never know the importance of even saving like money because when you see that a term has begun and a child has signed into school with four millions that is when you're like okay there is another term and then there is another term another four million. and then they are growing and if a kindergarten is this expensive, what's yes. going to happen in the years to come? So that's when you tighten your belt and you're like, you know what? Now we have started yeah, the roller coaster. Yes, to Simbu Day. So you realize that in singlehood, you are really having the fun of your life have the time but remember in singlehood still most people are even playing cut you know hide and seek mm. with money so whatever comes into the trap you know you have fun have fun and then you wait for the next years for the next thing to happen <coughs> but uh once you get into marriage then the application also yes. differs because then here you were used to i can eat your commando i can now you have to have food there is kameza. I have to leave money at home. And all of a sudden, you maybe get married to a man who thinks, okay, I must have dogs at home, and then I must stay in this kind of house, and, and, and all that kind of... So that means you have to sit down and say, okay, on a month, on a monthly, how much do we use? Do we use, buy food in bulk? Do yes. we buy every day? Do right. we, how do we spend? So you, so you see, the application differs from the different dynamics. Mm. When it's just the two of you in the house, you've just gotten married, that is different. When the children come in, my mm. friend, they become the masters. They are the owners, like they run the home yeah. because it's up to what they want, when they get sick, when they, you know, everything now becomes, uh, starts rotating. But remember, there's a time, a midlife crisis that is going to hit uh, where you're thinking about wealth creation. Now, here in Africa, people think about wealth creation much, much later. They don't think about it when they are youth. Otherwise, if we had this, com and I'm so glad that NSSF is having these financial literacy conversations, because you're supposed to think about your future right now, before you even marry, even in a relationship. Think about your future. Think about wealth creation. Think about your pension. Think about everything, retirement, you know, <laughs> starting now. But now, people get to 40 and 50, between 40 and 50, and then that's when they start, you know, I must build, you know, I must buy land, right. and then that is when they tell the women or the people at home, ha, mugena kuliebi nyebwa. You know, <laughs> uh, <laughs> yes. and then before you know it, like it's one directional, you know, it, because mm. now it's late and now you're trying to do everything mm. to make sure that you secure a future that you never created. And then you're thinking, okay, what's going to become of me when I get to 50? Okay. Yes. And then few people actually think about those things. There are people that get into 15. I think you've seen them. Mm. after party. Yes. Even the woman does not know where the man is. Comes back in the morning oh the woman leaves the children at home and goes she do lacho i've seen so many of them yeah. so they're not even thinking about financial implication they're not thinking about setting up securities and they're not thinking about setting up assets to be able to safeguard their future so these conversations are so crucial because the application comes and then when you get to the ailments yes you get to your 30s or 40s. Remember, in this generation, we take care of our parents. Yeah. Apart from our generation, where our children, it's going to be very hard for them to take care of us. Because half the, of half, most of the time, we have brought them in a very simple life. And a simple life creates a hard life. Yeah. But our hard life created a simple life. Because we wanted so much to get out of a hard life. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. So right now, you get, you get to 35, and now you have to take care of your mother who is sick, yeah. and their sicknesses are very expensive, Correct. you know, diabetes, and then magumba, and then, you know, you have to be in ICU, you have to be by crutches, by what, and while you're tr struggling to set up assets, while you're struggling, your children must go to school, yeah. so instead of waiting for us for things to ambush us at the same time, yes. why not start early? Grow your maturity uh, your relation, your mature relationship with money as yes. early as possible. Yes. So, but it feels like to, to, to get married is a good way to grow your money relationship yes. maturity. Yes. Now, <laughs> you see, uh, whether uh, recently we we I went and prayed for a man who had died in Mukono. For us Catholics, when you die and you are, you are, and you are to be buried in another parish, they have to bring uh, you, you come with a letter mm. from the parish priest. Indicating that you died <laughs> Catholic. <laughs> so they gave me the letter and I read the mass. But now after mass, the children come and give their speech. So this girl now is born again. Uh, then you see the born again, you can easily see them, the way they begin and whatever, you know. 
And then after, uh, she said that I thank, I, thank, I thank Jesus because by the time my dad died, she, he had uh, said yes to Jesus. Mm. After the letter. Yes, after the letter. After, <laughs> I, 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 no, even, even the mass was done. Oh. I felt so bad. But, but now I had, I had the letter. But now I came to find out yes. that this is the man who was 62 and he, he no longer had money. Now this mm. girl... Had, had, com had become born again, but she was Catholic before. So all her siblings were still Catholic. Mm. No, no, uh, uh, most of them, but about two of them had become born again. Mm. Now, because they were the ones with the money, they had to force their dad to go to, to the Kanisa. Where they go? Eh, tata, to Gendeli. Bobo, yagala to Kongere Saint, is Okudjanjaba. Yes. Kati hapo ndo baamu tuwala mukanisha. Omwana heza nao kutuwala musabu. If you don't have. Yes. So, whether you are single or married, we need to know how to handle money. That's, That's it. Possible. Whether you are single, ugamba, the earlier the better. Actually, uh, to, 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 to give back at yourself, to go for an outing, to, to enjoy some of your money, it is okay. Yes. It's part of the rules of managing money. You must, you must, you must make your cup full. Kubange bizubia Uganda tibi guawo, jajawo, sengawo. These extended families, they are too broad, too diverse. Me am a priest there in Impiji. Aba na ba singa ba ita gobi yambi kusome sebo bato na masome so bato nuliaga you cannot solve all the problems. You see, there is a lady I listen to. She's called Oprah Winifrey. She's a successful business lady in the U.S. I've, I've listened to most of her motivational speeches. And it says that when you are born, your job is one, to become the grandest, the maximum version of you. So you must discover, you must do some kind of self-discovery as early. Abantu bagamba, obulambwensi bulingala ini yemere. Sibuli echidi kula ini nitu ochidia. Osala mubi oyagala. Bulimutu ya noi nokubango manyama kupo gona itamokadi wobulunji. Because she doesn't have money. Though you are taking your kids to school, you have no guarantee that by the time you are out of work, by the time you are laid off, that they will come to your rescue. They are also sitting maneuvering, looking for their partners, looking for husbands. They are still trying out. But I inevitable. So, but in the early for me, I have a belief that by the time you die, God has given enough avenues, enough chances to make sure that by the time you die, you have some money. So, mbasaba, but in the beginning for, for, with your job, at least save twenty percent of your gross salary income. But there is nothing very disturbing than having a head that is full of 14 billion cells. I was telling people that having a very big head like a pumpkin and it is empty, it is even better for someone who has a smaller one like that of a mango when there is something inside there. In both laws, when you go into the constitution and even the laws of the church, I'm a Catholic, ignorance cannot save you. No. You must know what you are doing, like she was saying, to teach people. It is something good. People don't know what to do. When they get money, they buy all the cars. You find someone having five cars for what? Mm -hmm. Then you find someone at 35 years, 35, and they are, they are, they are building, they are constructing their dream house. Then I ask them, how, how can you construct a dream house at 40? Dream houses come at 60. But at 30, 35, you must be having a house that can habit you. When you are 40, 30, 40, bandi ba daba tuwafuka moto kaza biti izi, purimo, eze zimu nyuwa mpura. When you find anyone at 40 and below, baine moto kaza milio ni chikumi manyo mutuwe mukalu. Because at 40, mm -hmm. you have a car of, 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 of 100 million. Yes. Even you have no guarantee. How are you going to survive the next 60 years. Banabana was at the are you sure? Ntibana kuyam. So someone who is driving a primo a primo ngenyuampola. Nga kwa account I never cut dag. Is it better? Obanga in a matakaga kuzobanga in investment. Is it better than someone who is driving a car worth two hundred million when the accounts are empty? Mm. So each one you must see you see we are born with all the magic in us. To be whatever we, are, we have to be. Yeah. Problem where we have funny goals. I've been reminding people, each of us, we have 24 hours per day. 
you have 1,440 minutes, and you have 86,400 seconds. It's all about you. When you age with nothing, it's all about you. All excuses turn to regrets later. Each yeah. one you must have enough understanding on how you handle money, whether you are single, whether you are married. Even when you are married, they're better for you. You are now two. Two oh. ages are better than one. One case of Genda Masonga, Mudina Waka, to problem where you are, we are selfish, we are ignorant, but what for them will be our nature, Chiba Guangamo, Baba what the saint, Wofunya Misala Minunji, no, Quepanka Pans, Quepanka Panka, Napue, Garega, Kugula Motokas, or Nez, the Gurika, Quebu, Nusa Mutunga, is sort of There are so many poor have died because of money, they have died because of ignorance. It is important you understand yes. how you manage your money. And how you are driving into the future. This year is here. Today you are earning millions of money. But tomorrow you could be laid off. Tomorrow you can get any, anything can happen. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. Mr. Edmaster, when I see you uh, on the pulpit. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you so much. Uncle Mo. You didn't use the, the correct words. Uh, sa, sa. Uncle Mo. Sa Edmaster. Sa Edmaster, sir. Thank you so much, uh, Uncle Mo. And... Uh, I've been staring here quite for a while and I, I haven't lost my thoughts because what is the, the wisdom? I, I don't think you have gotten to your second question. I have realized you have only asked one question and this good, the good gentleman and the lady are really, really doing us justice. Thank you so much, Father Chibi. Thank you so much, Hilda, for whatever you are sharing with us. I wanted to just uh, give you a brief of what is happening on the other media and maybe also get you uh, ready to bring in some of these questions. Uh, Many people, uh, at the beginning, people thought we're just money, money, the word that was used, you are manalizing everything. And I want to tell that person, no, we are not manalizing it. Money is actually not important, but it's important to the important things in life. We do not worship money. And I encourage you not to worship money. I encourage you to actually master money. Because if you allow it to master you, then you have no room to be to serve anything else it will it will, it will it is it is a it's one of the worst masters so what we are doing here is getting you to understand that money is not important but it's important to the important things in life and you need to master it it's a tool that has come out quite evidently it's a tool ladies and gentlemen money is a tool work send it to do those things that you want to be done money is a tool there are quite a number of uh, uh, just Hilda to note that quite a number of people are saying that's my coach, that's my coach I have seen quite a number of people you are coaching that's my life coach they are all say, uh, sharing their, uh, their, their, uh, their greetings with you there are quite a number of people also saying why did we take long to bring father uh, and I need to tell you that he's not a, 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 an easy man to catch <laughs> uh, we, but we are grateful that he, sp he spared some of this time. Uncle Mo, there's quite a number of questions and you need to pick some of these things and share this, 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 this uh, our esteemed panel needs to pick some of these things. But before I go away, I needed to just bring up to the landscape one, one last thing, one last thing uh, before I leave this podium. Money is a, uh, there's a definitely a relationship with money, but there is also a season. Each season has something around money. And I wanted to just share with you this uh, before I leave. There is a season when you need, to, there's a season of getting money. Now, getting money is a, is a, is a lifelong process. You're looking, for a, 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 you're looking for a relationship, there is a get when you need to get money. This is the wealth cycle. And uh, for everyone goes through this cycle, but different depends which direction. They, they, some of them go the other way, and we'll, I will demonstrate that. There is a season of keeping, or there is a time to keep money. You get money, you need to keep money. Some of us, as has been described, the relationship is where you get money and money goes away. You are just a conduit, you are just a, a broke of money, you are just receiving it on behalf of the others, and you never have any of it in your pocket. You are, you, are, you are running a risky life, in the words of Father Chibi. You need to grow money. It is a sin if money stays with you and never grows. Money needs to grow. If you have money, and I, I always refer to an example of one old woman who kept her money quite intent, quite carefully, and she kept, 
she kept 50,000 up over 50 million or 50,000 and she never even got a chance to exchange it when the 50,000 notes were being retired so she had 50 million or 50,000 of the old notes and they were they are not they are now worth about 20 uh, 20,000 so grow money growing money needs to be it's when you grow money and refer, referring to father chibi a failed generation if you fail to sustain if money fails to outlive you you have failed your entire generation so sustain it get into the relationship of sustaining money if you have gotten into one of getting money keeping it growing it then learn how to sustain it the most interesting one and the one i like most is the one where you need to eat money how are you eating your money now i told you everyone goes through this cycle and uh, there is a huge 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 number of people whose cycle is when they get money they jump right to eating money they yeah. skip all these other things let me tell you ladies and gentlemen i to use father chibi's words you a failed generation <laughs> uncle mo yes sahid master uncle mo sahid master sir please take much sahid master sir uh now to carry on and uh moments of bringing this conversation home i want to first Start with the first thing I had Hilda mentioning it, that it is important for you to do a financial health check. You, you, you know, just like how people go, like, I mean, the serious people who check mm. the health, the health yes. checks every year, mm. it is important, I think, for people to have times to understand where they stand. Like yes. I talked about earlier, you might be poor, but you don't even know how, how yes. poor. Mm. So... How can someone get help for a financial health check? Okay. Now, um, just, I think it's a, the, the Luganda Rugero that says, I'm a gezi murido. You know, you get it from another person. <laughs> right. Okay. So we have people in our community, people that are dedicated to help. Yes. And um, could be someone that you really admire, someone that has done well for themselves mm. uh, financially and wealth creation. And you're like, okay, I want a few tips from this person. What did they do? At my age, what were they doing that I am not doing that has gotten them ahead of the game and ahead of everyone else? And these days we have financial literacy coaches. We have people that are not just about money making because you have to be very careful from mm -hmm. home. But again, so there are so many people that have also come up in the name of wanting to help, but when they don't have the solid structures of yeah. actually helping. Now you see how you have the wealth cycle mm. and someone looks at it and then you're like, you know what? I've been getting my money um, and not keeping it, not uh, growing it, not sustaining it, but eating it. So now I have three f things to figure out. Yes. Now you go back and reflect, what have I been doing wrong that now I must be able to rectify? And you know, if these days we have a chance, you can self-teach. You know, mm. just like the Reverend had been saying, you will watch so many people. That The thing is, some of us choose the most important people to watch, that even on my feed, you don't just appear on my feed. Right. I have to choose you to appear on my feed because I know that everything else is wastage of my time. Mm. So what if I see you and you're putting on many glamorous clothes and you're a slay queen with what and then I'm doing... Uh, uh, that does not benefit me. I need information. I need to take in something that I can apply somewhere and it can be able to help me. So there's a lot of material content out there mm. that is actually very good on such um, on, on such instances and financial literacy uh, kind of platforms. This is a lot... Do you know that just by this, someone can be able to pick a thing and be yes. able to apply it in their own lives so i'm thinking there is a lot we can learn from other people that have been there done that yeah. and by the way even if you see a poor person as in you can be able to say you know what i don't want to go back to that if right. i have to work extra so let's reflect about what uh, has has happened let's pick the lessons because part of the emotions that keep us in the rat race when it comes to making money yes. is the emotion of regret we look back and we yeah. we regret and we point fingers at other people mm. my mother did not good, give me a good beginning my father did not no all, all of us our parents some of our parents did not give us good beginnings mm. but we knew we had to begin somewhere and we didn't create the excuses because excuse and success cannot dwell in the same sentence. So you choose yeah. what you want. So, um, I mean, self-teach, go ask for the knowledge, pay if you must pay to get the knowledge, but make sure that you seek for the knowledge. Uh, you see, um, someone said that an unexamined life is mm. insane life. Yeah. 
Another one said, an unexamined life, that one was a philosopher, an unexamined life is not worth living. You see, for me, I've been having a slogan. For me, I learned from the best to become the best. When I was at Gaba, I read about the, the wealth above Ngasina Chebetaza. Even these life coaches, there must be people who have earned. When you go to the U.S., to invite you to come and uh, speak to these young people who are going out, uh, are they called gradu graduates? Graduates. Yes, yes. yes, to speak to them. Baba um, Itabate, Baba Jia, you know, uh, Kali, you come and... Keynote and, speech, and, uh, eh? The keynote speakers at the grad yes, yes, keynote speakers. You must have achieved. So, so, first of all, someone to give you knowledge about money, these must be people who have achieved. Not people have too many words. People have too many words and they have nothing. They have not applied. So yeah, they, they have not applied. And someone comes and motivates you, tells you everything is possible. You see him jumping on a border border. Mm. Eh? The, way he speaks is as, the way he speaks and lectures, it's as if he came in a very, very nice car. You see the guy moving on foot to go back home. So you need to get someone. Then, secondly, for me, I've been getting, you know, some people have been asking, you, you are not married. Where do you get the authority to ask the married people? Yes. Then I tell them, for me, I've been getting knowledge three, through three ways. One, through reflection. When I read about most successful people, they, they wake up between 4.30 and 5.30. Mm. Is it between 4.30 and 5.30? Yes. It's only here in Uganda you find people who sleep as if they are competing with the dead. They sleep at 8, wake up at 10. But these village people, they wake up between 4.30 and 5.30. And one of the things they do to start off their day, is reflection, meditation. So sometimes I, I before I switch off, I switch on the lights after prayer. I sit down and do some reflections. Secondly, I learn through imitation. Mm. I, le I I read, I learn from other people. So I encourage everyone go online. You people have big phones. Go on those podcasts there. Go online. Go actually internet. That is the best classroom. For me, I've, been, I've made my car a mobile conference hall. I go listening to better preachers than me. I, lis I listen to them. So, so, so um, imitate people. Learn from people. Go on internet. Go on YouTube. Go on Google. Go and learn. Yes. People have internet. People, people have these big phone, big smartphones. Yes. Some of them are very expensive. But what do you use them for? All the best coaches are there. The most successful people are there. You can get access to courses that people, conferences that people have paid huge sums of money to Gandhi. Listen, and they're just free of charge there because of your data. Yeah. Then, lastly, learn from experience. Someone said that when life push, uh, when when life beats you down, yes. try to land on your back and look up because if you can look up, you can get up. Learn from your mistakes. Learn from the, the the mistakes and errors that you make. But you know, you know. Um, I want to encourage each and every one. Eh? Yes. You need you need these coaches here in Uganda. We are having fewer marriage marriage professional counselors. We have we have more, we have fewer professional professional counselors in many of the fields. But we are having some who are coming up like Hilda. So let us use them. And when you go there, learn. Then for for some of us, we need. Professional people like these, these uh, like the Cristiano Ronaldo, all, all those <laughs> premiership stars, the Liga stars, Bonaba, Bazani, Bomopi, Nabaman, Budimontu, and Nabali Nakaba, and two, Ababa Pulani, Gila Sanders, I was just called Ah, Bola Banga to Sobola, Funomutra Kuyamba, Wamazima, so Chikakatako, Budimontu, and no Soma, no Yiga, in the Kankuudi Amani Gensi, Mokama, I told the Senate Kamaman. When the power of the universe discovers that you are messing up with any treasure, any blessing, the blessing will be taken away from you. Yes. Those of you who have no agenda, life will give you an agenda. If you have no program, life will program you. If you cannot sit down and use the experience, if you can see these people even, who even never went to school, they are P4 graduates, P7 graduates, they have money in Kampala. What of you have masters and PhDs? Why did you even go to school? When you go to school, all those papers, you know, success, uh, academic success is not just about a pile of papers, but from Makerere, from the primary, secondary Makerere, Mumutwebo, Toina Mazima, Magazi, 
Gasobola kutula wansi na ugamba. Now money is coming. I'm still young. Toina guarantee that tomorrow. Ina bozi rinda. Notula no laba. How you can really sit down and plan. If you have no plan. Life will forcefully give you a plan. And I want to warn each one of you. May have been to hospitals. When we go to hospitals. We find people. Watu ukeri. Mudwari do. Tebala muza. It is like a hotel. Or a supermarket. Tenda ka monsali deku. It's all a bill. So, say it was a vacuum, come here, and those in the could we are men on the queue. When you get a chance, those of you have a so do, never said that my man, but a place in the Binevio Kuasaba Kazi, a Missan and Nature, no one's hanga at a gate. Binevio Gedango Zalambu Yazari Kamo. You buy every car that you want. My dear, I want to assure you, make sure. You get knowledge from wherever you can get it on how to manage your money. Mm. Reverend Father Deograta Chibi Katerega. <laughs> <laughs> now, I, there's uh, something I want to uh, bring to you, Reverend Father. You know, these uh, financial uh, literacy conversations, I mean, uh, rich as they are, by the time they reach so many of us, we are, I mean, so many people are like, yeah, what they're saying is valid. <laughs> Mm -hmm. So many people online are saying they will get the debt. Someone is is drowning in debt. Someone, mm -hmm. um, people are without hope financially. For someone for this conversation to be valid to them, anywhere they are or any stage they are in their financial life or their wealth creation journey, mm -hmm. I mean, how can you validate and give hope in such a situation? Start from where you are. Use what you have, do what you can. But uh, you know, uh, to give hope, normally no matter what you to hold up, I'm not going to go and say that I could never hold up. But just have an image of the teacher so far. No matter the salary, I could use some money to just save money to save So, the rest of us, I want to give you hope that. Always, always, any, 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 ble, any opportunity hmm. that comes to you, use it and learn. Many times God passes through us to talk to us, to see that we learn from our mistakes. Yeah. The hope I give each one of you out there is that uh, try to, Try, try to see, you see, you see when, when, when we are talking about money, mm -hmm. people think that we are talking about those who are earning salaries, people who have a lot of money in their, in their, in their bank accounts. Kadabata wama abata ina sente, beja munta atibaga amba fe. Na ye, budi omu, wherever you are, whether you are in the village, whether you are in the town, whether you yet have a job or not, just learn. Money has no legs. Money is invisible. It comes to those people who are already rich in the heart. There's something I've discovered in these families. When you go there, you find there are about 10 people, but only three are wealthy. Then you come to know that money goes on looking. In every generation, God is looking for people to give money. But you know, you know it must first of all be in you. You know, you know, you know to get some, you, you, we only get what we see in us. Kati mufune e mikwano, e jibe toro denga jiba yamba. Abantu abamu emyaka je baliko ya kuswala buswazi te bacha awuliriza nebo bofunye chance okusoma ojja kuyambibwa buli muntu yene na wetekinga mu shubu ya mbade ngabantu become your own booster become your own inspiration sometimes talk to yourself give a summon to yourself that why should i stay late midnight i'm drinking with the people why should i stay late until sometimes you have to talk to yourself o demwe we shubi no sins it up with Gambia, then you move on. But you can say something about that. Uh, definitely the learning curve, Tekoma, you can begin and it's never too late. Yeah. You can begin now and create a brand new ending. Nfunya bantunga ba miyake atano, nadja, na kugama ntio manyi, ndude in the curve of career, na yenga, I am stunted, I've plateaued somewhere and uh, i want to make a different decision and this has not been my purpose this has not been my passion but then call just the end game yeah. but you realize 
ngabo kola sente na inga nokugasa ogasa so this person wanted to, to you know to, to flip and you know try something else definitely we went to go we went through the options and all of a sudden she landed onto something that she really loves she wakes up every day energetic and you know willing to do it and she's making money and she's made more money than all the 50 years that all the, the other 30 years that yeah. she had been making that means it's never too late and these days 60 is the new 40 you have you seen people at 50 how they look like like yep. they look very young someone at 60 they look like they're 40 and one of the pillars i'm actually writing a book about money and one of the some of the pillars that i'm basing it's just my, about my personal story and my personal struggles and where i've come from but one of them is the life pillar the fitness pillar the reason as to why the 60 can be the new 40 is because someone is working on their lives. They go to gym or they do the simple exercises. They are healthy because what use is money yeah. if you have no life? <clears throat> so that means you have to be. What's use is your environment. For example, relationships like Reverend Father has been saying. Mm -hmm. Relationships. If the relationships around you are not supportive of your wealth creation and your journey, that means they are sucking life out of you and zapping energy out of you. That means you need to plant yourself in environments yes. that are really nurturing you to be able to take an extra mile and, you know, go an extra mile. So there are so many things that are surrounding money, but you can start right now. Work. You can be able to work and figure out something that you love and you're passionate about. Because something that uh, is passion-driven, I mean, you of all people should know, passion-driven kind of work, you know, it will, give, it will energize you. Even when you're sick, you'll wake up and work because you love what you are doing. It's not just appearing before a boss and signing in and saying, you know what, I appeared to work, or you just come and do something that, you know, uh, you're just doing a job. So there's so many pillars that we can talk about that surround money, but not Knowledge is very, very crucial. The moment you find knowledge, you get hold, a hold of that knowledge. And the moment you have a positive attitude yeah. to know that it's never too late, I can start right now and I can view everything in a very positive regard because it's like a filter. When you see doom and gloom, it's doom and gloom. But if yeah. you see positivity, it's like a paintbrush. You're pr painting bright colors. You're saying, you know what? I will get it. Because that motivation and that positivity mm -hmm. will drive you to even create more streams of income. You'll be like, okay, what can I do? I can actually do affiliate marketing. Mm -hmm. What can I do? I can actually, I don't have to use my own money. I can use other people's money to actually make money. I can deliver goods at food. I can do an online business. I can, wh I, what do I do between eight and five? And then what do I do between five and midnight, I can be able to extend my working hours while I'm still energetic so that I can cover up for the years that I'm never going to be energetic. So the ball is in our hands. And uh, there is something she has mentioned mm. that I believe in. When I read about these billionaires, I discovered that 75% of the billionaires globally, yes. they get money from their hobbies. They do what they love. They do something that will make you that will make you wake up very early in the morning and go to do it. Do it One time they, they did some statistics in the US and they found that many people were getting heart attacks between seven and eight in the morning. And they discovered why? Because some of them were in abusive relationships and they were going to work. They were go they were going to jobs that they don't like. Here in Uganda, many people are in a, in a offices they are doing jobs they don't like you can just see uh, from from uh, uh, from senior one no from primary one to p7 you don't know what you're, you don't know what you will be mm. then from senior to senior four you are waiting for the results to pick the subjects that you pass then to form a combination yeah. <laughs> then after, after, after then after senior six in the case you have failed then you go back at senior five and you offer nursing then you go into nursing so here, people, people do not know what they want, and uh, there's, you find someone who has a certificate in nursing, they're doing business. Mm. So, I've been in some of these institutions. You find offices, people who are supposed to be retiring. They are dying in, in those offices. Mm. They are not. They have been working. Yeah. They have been earning money for years and years. Where is your money? Even they don't know where the money is. So, Kati, those of you who are viewing, if you are in a job and you analyze that you have been working for 10 years, you have nothing. 
retire tomorrow. Go and start something for yourself. Those of you are doctors, you have been working in Mulago for over 30 years. Even you have nothing. You have, you have no, no clinic you have started. You know? So you must ensure that if you are in a job, you have gotten nothing for all the years you have been working there, have been there for 15 years, and you have no any savings, you have no any investments. Sometimes we have to, we have to, we have to, to, to retire ourselves from these jobs and again and start something that we that, that we love to do yeah. something that will give Find you passion purpose, yeah. something that we and even she talked about positivity it's even 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 having the proper mindset regarding achievement in life is something mm. also very good so let each one go and analyze themselves yeah. see where you are coming from see where you are and we're heading to uh, you know the, 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 the recently you see we demolished our church in mpg and they wanted to secure a loan to buy a piece of land near the parish and they asked me for my financial card i went to centenary bank and i discovered that i secured my first loan of 20 million by the way in my first year of priesthood from the, uh, that year i was uh, i was able to eat my first loan of 30 million to do something, I'll tell you when I come back next time. <laughs> so for me, <laughs> I opened up. Side master, sir. <laughs> you, you said. <laughs> for me, I opened up my first bank account when I was in my senior for vacation. For me, I was ordained when I already had a different understanding of life and money. Each okay. one, you need to know how you are moving into the future regarding money issues. And money is good. And money is good. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. uh, uh, you, you see, um, by the way, before I even go any further, just want, just want to let you know that it's like close to approximately 10 minutes to 5. I don't want to say it again, but you know. <laughs> now, um, bringing this conversation home, looking back to where you come from, before you knew all you know right now, mm -hmm. what would you tell your younger self today? Hilda. What I would tell my younger self is to find my purpose and passion where early in life and pursue yeah. that relentlessly because the curve is never linear you don't just go from level to level like right. glory to glory no sometimes the curve is zigzag you yeah. take five steps behind you take two steps ahead and you keep fidgeting like that but keep fidgeting and keep going you keep will going. master the game and you will get it reverend father yes for me one um respect i would respect each time zone I'm in, that if I'm in a primary school, I would I would I would enjoy mm. that time. <coughs> if I'm secondary school, I would enjoy that time. If I'm at university, I would enjoy that time because these years they form a basement for my future. So wherever you are, respect the time zone and work so hard. Then secondly, um, if I get my first job. The f I could begin saving and investing beginning with my first job. Three, my younger self, I think there was some time when I was not reading enough. Yes. I could read at least approximately 50 books per year. I could read so that my head is full of a lot of knowledge, a lot of awareness, so that my store of knowledge can help me to do to, to make some proper decisions then lastly i could always surround myself with people who are helpful every time of my life because many times we are surrounded by people i, I sometimes i've been surrounded by people yeah. who have not really given me good advice so it, my younger self that eh, as young as i am from school from university from from any place of work i could be I would surround myself with people because scientifically we are an average of the four or five people we surround ourselves with. Because when they give you the knowledge, it's very easy for you to get a safe landing. Thank you very much. Everyone online, we thank you for staying with us. Uh, we are doing our best now to bring the conversation home uh, soon. But before we go any further, the director of studies of this institution, <laughs> Ewan Dos Aisha, is with us. Yes, Aisha. I think your microphone should, yeah, tap it. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Uncle Mo. A very good, eve good, good afternoon to our honorable chief guests, Father Reverend Chivi, uh, Hilda, and our esteemed uh, viewers and members on this call today. 
My name is Aisha Nakanwaji. I am a customer financial advisor at NSSF. I am very privileged to propose a vote of thanks and also acknowledge your contribution to this event today on behalf of NSSF. Today we had an opportunity to hear your thoughts on love and money, and your thoughts have enlightened our minds and shown us a new path. Yeah. You, you have given a deep insight into the topic, and we thank you for that. Uh, Father Chiri, you mentioned that we need to plan for our legacy and leave a legacy that will leave generations to come. You are also very big on self-discovery, and also I realize that you are, you are a man of reflection, and you advise that we should all seek knowledge and always reflect. That is something I believe all of us can take on from this call. Hilda, you also clearly pointed out that the journey of wealth thinking and creation starts now and not at 60. Thank you very much for your thoughts on that. Um, Uncle Mo, aka Moses, thank you very much. You gave a very excellent coverage on the topic with your excellent moderation skill set. Uh, but before we close, as always, we always have a homework we give our members and viewers. I, I would like that you recommend a book or a magazine or a documentary that our viewers can subscribe to to help them on this journey to financial wellness. Uh, before we close, I would also like that you share the book you recommend and your last words to the audience. Uh, once again, thank you very much on behalf of NSSF, on behalf of the financial literacy team, our back end team, the live stream team, the financial literacy section, and everyone who has been part of this very occasional event. Thank you very much. Ankomo and the panelists. Uh, thank you very much, Aisha. Uh, so in this moment, like uh, Aisha has said, uh, we need uh, a prescription. <laughs> uh, write out people a prescription mm -hmm. and send it in and of course your uh, parting shots. Okay, uh, for me is uh, money. I, I love money. Not in a bad way, but in a good way. And I know that it is very, very possible. Let me tell you, if you have money, like there's a way you, you just glow. You just look nice, you know? When I know I have a, a, a backup of money somewhere, and I think as some wives, we should be very upfront about this. My yeah. husband knows that you know what? I can never run dry. Mm -hmm. The moment I run dry, I think I will look like I am a zombie somewhere in the streets. I have to have money. Mm -hmm. So, and I work for it. Very hard working. If I need to travel, if I need to wake up early, if I need to, 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 to kufungiza, here I come get my hands dirty i'll make sure that i have to i have to work so my parting shots is work 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 but work smart yeah yes i know the working hard uh, we have a phase of working hard but there there's a phase that comes and you really have to work smart so make sure that you know all those phases you know where you fall and you know what happens i think uh for the book i would recommend high performance um uh, by Brendan. I think that is uh, something because when you're a high performer, mm -hmm. you always have the goal on the prize and you're always, you know, advancing towards wealth creation. So uh, high performance, it's an easy book to get. I think you can get it even at a restock or online. So I would recommend that. Thank you very much, Hilda. Reverend Father. Yes, uh, my concluding remarks. Um, life is a treasure. Mm. It's a blessing to be alive. <laughs> It's always good for each one at any age from the age of reason. For us in the church, age of reason is seven. When yes. you begin understanding, it is your job to become the best of yourself every day, to add value to yourself. Yes. You need to know what you want. You need to set up yourself and your system. You must be focused and must know where you are heading to. You must kick out what does not help and only leave what helps. We are, uh, each one expects you to have a good direction, that you are moving in the right way. I've been telling people to check always their age. And they say, Father, you are putting us on too much pressure. And you tell them, my friend, we don't grow backwards. We grow onwards. Yes. We grow into the future. What you can do now, in 10 years' time, you won't be able to do it. Yes. Remain humble. When you get money, don't be too excited. Don't give money out of excitement. 
money comes to you when you show it direction. When you show that when you come, you are heading there, we are putting up an apartment, money will continue to come. So I encourage you always to seek knowledge from the right places. Seek knowledge from people. Learn from those who have gone through what you are yet to go through. Everywhere we have good examples in our families, on our villages. Go be humble enough to go and learn from other people. And the book I would recommend is, is of course, the, the, there is a common book that each one knows, Rich Daddy Poor Dad. You see those two dads, they are different, they are different approaches to money. Mm -hmm. And each one has a lesson yes. that each one can pick. So Rich Dad Poor Dad is the book that I recommend you to read. But if not only that, read about different, different uh, people who have talked about money. Go to YouTube. I've used YouTube many times. Yes. There are so many great people there. Some are alive, some are dead, but there is good information. Then even Google and even some other books. Those who, who, who can purchase books online. They are best books about money, about positive living and success. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, the panelists. Uh, it has been a very rich conversation. I mean, you've had it. Uh, Hilda is big on uh, making sure you work smart. And of course, both of them have been very big on making sure you can suck up as enough knowledge as possible. I think I believe in that as well. Sucking as enough knowledge as possible. We have, we have authors in front here. So me, the books you should be reading are the books these guys have written. I've already told you one by Hilda about self-love. You will need it. Yeah, because today you might need to love yourself because the flowers are not coming. Uh, <laughs> now, ladies and, now and me, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> I would like for me to close with the words of Reverend Father Omavu Tanyo Sayagala, Omavu Tanyo Sayagala, Awasari Wo, Tawasam Kazigwa Yagala. Thank you. <laughs> All right, thank you very much, Ankomo. Thank you so much, uh, Hilda. It make it off. Thank you so much, uh, Ankomo, for moderation, and Hilda and uh, Father TV for the great uh, moderation and the key points you shared with us. I will also leave my audience, our audience with uh, one, of the, one of the quotes I love from my favorite author, Robin Sharma. He says one thing, that masters have one thing in common. They think like beginners. So all the questions, back ends that we solve, how people are worried like they are, where they are now and how will they get where they want to go. Let them think, because masters think like beginners, so let them start now, because if not now, then yeah. when? Thank you. Cari.